I'm Phaedra. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the artist and astrologer of Mystic Physic Astrology, and I use Western Sidereal Astrology in my practice to help you reconnect with your self-purpose and to help you remember why you came into this world in the first place. And my aim, as always, is to provide guidance on how we can use consciously use the energy of the transiting plants to affect our lives in a positive way. In other words, to respond to our transits rather than simply react to our transits. And so we'll be talking about eclipses today from that perspective. We'll also get into what the current July-August eclipse season means for you specifically. So thank you for joining me. Uh, please like and share this broadcast. Tag a friend if you know someone who might be interested. You can also follow Mystic Physic on Facebook and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's talk about how to know whether a particular eclipse in the current eclipse season that we're experiencing is going to affect you directly. So this is where you're going to want to have your sidereal natal chart with you and ideally you'll have a printout. I should have mentioned that probably before we started broadcasting and I didn't. Um, but the reason being is you might want to actually make a note on the actual paper chart. But what I'm going to do is post here in the comment box and cross my fingers that it doesn't make the signal wonky. This is a link where you can get your sidereal natal chart. Okay. I gotta squish my browser back down so I can see my notes. <laughs> so um, using your Fagan Bradley sidereal natal chart, um, like I said, you can look one up using that online calculator and you can just grab a screenshot of it. If you have a printout, that's best for this particular uh, experience. Hi, Jonna, it's good to have you on. Hi, Laura, thanks for joining me. So now, because eclipses happen, in 18 to 24 month long uh, cycles in pairs of signs, uh, I was saying there could be a little overlap between the signs themselves as we exit one series and enter the next, right? Uh, we're experiencing that right now when we look at the zodiac through the Fagan Bradley sidereal lens. We're coming to the end of the Cancer Capricorn series which began in February 2017 and will end, we'll have our very last one in January 2019. Okay, And then we're beginning the Gemini Sagittarius series which actually began two weeks ago on July 12th Okay, and will end on July 4th, 2020. Okay. So you can see that there's a little bit of overlap in that the Gemini Sagittarius cycle started already, but we're still about six months away from the final eclipse of the Cancer Capricorn series. Okay. So grabbing your chart, there are some dates and degrees to check. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at all three eclipses in this series one at a time, starting with the one we just had July 12th, two weeks ago, because we're still feeling it. It's still in effect, and you may want to think back to events that have happened and see if you can't piece together uh, some of the clues around how this particular eclipse series might affect you or any of the ones that we're going we're gonna to talk about. So July 12th, we had a new moon solar eclipse in Sidereal Gemini. It was at 25 degrees, 41 minutes. Late again. That's okay, Danielle. You can absolutely catch the replay. So what you'll want to do is have a look at your sidereal natal chart for a planet or point at 25 or 26 even, like in that area, of an air sign, so Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, or of a fire sign, because that's, if you go opposite to Gemini, you're into the fire signs, right, in Sagittarius. So 25 or 26 degrees of a fire sign, so Sagittarius, Leo, or Aries. And if you have a planet or personal point at 25 or 26 degrees of one of those signs, you will feel this particular July 12th eclipse that we just had quite directly. You'll also feel it strongly if your sun or ascendant is in the sign of Gemini. Okay. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that for some folks, that'll happen uh, because the eclipse is making a trine aspect to a planet or point, in which case it may be less challenging 
if it's making a square or opposition, it can be more challenging. Okay. Uh, so check the fire and air signs in your sidereal natal chart. And then also, let's write down some dates because you're going to want to go back and look at your planner if you keep a journal or a diary or even just think back if you don't keep track. And you might want to keep track or, or maybe make notes when you notice patterns like this. Around the 8th and 9th of May is when we would have initially begun feeling the July 12th eclipse. Right, so for some folks, they got their eclipse news uh, just in those early days of May, around the 8th and 9th. For the next batch of folks, slightly larger group, like I was saying, that bell curve distribution, the 7th and 9th of June, they may have heard news. Then in the week before and after July 12th, August 12th or 13th, which is coming up, we're not even there yet, and then again in September near the 13th and 14th. So those are the dates that you want to keep an eye on. If you have a planet or point at 25 or 26 degrees of a fire or air sign in your sidereal natal chart. Okay, now think back to May and June and even July, mid-July when we had the eclipse, if there was something significant that happened for you um, at one or more of those sets of dates because that will give you a clue as to what uh, the coming eclipse series is going to be dealing with for you and that's the coming series that won't end until uh, July 4th, 2020, okay? Um, I'm going to check real quick if we have questions or anything. I don't see any, but I just want to double check. And like I said, some of you, I, if you have questions, I might not be able to see them until after the broadcast just because we've shared this into some closed groups. Okay, but moving on to the eclipse coming up tomorrow. So July 27th, we have a full moon lunar eclipse in Capricorn at 9 degrees 45 minutes. So what you'll want to do is check your sidereal natal chart for a planet or personal point at nine or 10 degrees of an earth or water sign. So the earth signs being Capricorn, Virgo, and Taurus, the water signs being Cancer, uh, Scorpio, Pisces, okay? So if you have a planet or personal point at nine or 10 degrees of one of those signs, yes, this one coming up, tomorrow, you will likely feel it directly. You may have already received some news about what it will be dealing with for you. Um, this particular eclipse and the one coming up in uh, August, because they are part of the Cancer Capricorn series that's going to end this coming January, this may be something that you've been dealing with off and on since July, or excuse, since February 2017, when this particular series first started. And it may not come completely to the end of the transition until the months after the final eclipse in January 2019, okay? So this one, you have kind of a broader selection of dates because you could potentially do this exercise going back to all the previous Cancer Capricorn eclipses we've had and see which ones touch your chart directly and then do the memory exercise and see what you come up with. But all, in all likelihood, if you were to do that, you would find that all of the events that have come up are related to a particular ongoing thing in your life that you're dealing with. Danielle, I know you can attest to that. <laughs> so check your earth and water signs, like I was saying, and then these are the important dates to note for tomorrow's eclipse the 25th and 26th of May, you may have heard news. The 25th and 26th of June. Of course, the 27th of July, but we're gonna extend that to include the week leading up to and the week after it, okay? And then the 27th and 28th of August, that's what will uh, trigger next month. And then lastly, the 27th of September would be uh, the outside date just for this particular event, okay? But keeping in mind, like I said, if you do have an aspect to the eclipse point, you will likely feel it over the coming year as it continues to make aspects to the eclipse degree. Danielle says, my gosh, yes, I know, I know. So August 11th, coming up next month, 
This is the third eclipse in a row. This doesn't happen all the time. They just come in twos. Sometimes they come in threes, especially when they're shifting like that. Jonna says, my July has been bad. I don't want any more of it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of folks have felt that way, Jonna. Um, and I, you know, that I want to say it sucks and commiserate with you. But at the same time, while I was putting together my notes for this broadcast, I came across something that I thought was kind of a good reminder for all of us. And so this is from, uh, from Max Heindel's writing. He was an astrologer that lived in the early part of last century. Um, what he says here, and this is a great reminder, in most cases, bad horoscopes are greater blessings than good ones. The purpose of suffering, adversity, sickness, anguish, sadness, and happiness is not vengeance, but education and experience. And when once we realize that, we shall cease to fume and complain and ask, why is this happening to me? What have I done to deserve all this? We'll know that what's happening is for our highest and greatest good, ultimately, even if it's difficult when we're in the middle of it. So I'm sorry that your July has been bad, because that is kind of sucky. However, I will say this to you, that as you go forward, once you've gained the benefit of hindsight, you'll be able to see how going through all of this crap right now was actually a good thing for you ultimately. But usually we don't get that benefit until we can look back and go, oh, I understand why that happened now. Um, so August 11th, the new moon solar eclipse in Cancer will happen at 23 degrees 41 minutes. So this is going to affect folks who have a, a planet or a personal point at 23 or 24 degrees of an Earth or water sign. So again, we're talking about uh, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo for the Earth signs. We're talking about Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces for the water signs. Okay. <laughs> Let's revisit <laughs> later on down the road once you've had to, a chance to see how all of this plays out for you, whatever it is that's going on. And we'll look back and we'll do another assessment. And then uh, I would... I, would love to reconnect with you on it and see how things do ultimately turn out for you and whether it's good or bad. Marianne says, I've been anxious all week. This isn't making me feel any better. <laughs> good things can happen during eclipses. Uh, really good things can happen during eclipses, Marianne. Um, so don't, don't let it stress you out. Just know that um, regardless of how a particular eclipse influences you, you can choose to work with that energy in a positive way rather than, you know, scrambling and, and feeling defensive and, and feeling, uh, I don't know what the words are that I want, but feeling like the negative feelings about it um, because they can affect you negatively. You can, you can choose to tackle. So for instance, the one that happened in July 2010, that one uh, happened, I want to say, as part of a Grand Cross that was happening at that time. Now, a grand cross is a really challenging experience. There's a lot of tension and uh, a lot of opposition because you've got something at each of the four points, right? Um, it can be a really challenging thing to go through. And for me, while a lot of the other experiences I had at that time were challenging, Ultimately, having gone through them, I'm in a far better place now, and I wouldn't have had it any other way, ultimately, because if I hadn't gone through those experiences, I might still be working nine to five for a bank, being frustrated and miserable, and having to engage in like high pressure sales tactics and stuff, and who wants to do that? Who wants to do that? No one, right? So good things can come out of challenging circumstances, but usually we don't see what they are until after and the good has arrived. And then we're like, oh, that was good, nice. So for the August eclipse, the one that's happening on the 11th, these are the dates that you want to note. Uh, June 9th, which of course we're already past. July 10th, which we're already past. The 11th of August, which is the day of the eclipse, so include the week before and the week after that. The 9th and 11th of September, and the 9th and 12th of October. So put big stars on those dates. And then 
I would also say if you are having a planet or point being triggered by one of these eclipses, grab your calendar and make a note uh, for the lunations, the proper lunations that might re-trigger that. So if it's at a square or conjunction or opposition, you're going to be looking at the lunations that also make squares, conjunctions, or oppositions. Um, if it makes a trine, you're going to be looking at the new and full moons that make trines or sextiles to the eclipse that you're, you're considering. So look ahead for the whole year and maybe find a way to make a notation in your planner or in your calendar so that that doesn't take you by surprise when it happens. You can kind of get yourself mentally prepared for it, physically prepared for it if you need to, um, or if it has to do with something that you're actively working with that you want to you know, have a good strong outcome for yourself, then uh, you can also choose to uh, to think in advance of how you want to use the energy, what actions you want to take and when, like I did when I chose the day of the eclipse to quit smoking. Okay. Now, if you have, uh, like I said, a planet or point within plus or minus five degrees of the eclipse itself making a major aspect, uh, excuse me, or making a major aspect within three degrees, the past dates you'll think back to and then watch for events to happen near the coming dates as the, as the eclipse energy is triggered. Okay. Now, if you have questions, go ahead and pop them into the comment box. I'd be happy to address them. I don't know that I've missed any, but I'm going to double check real quick. Okay. Now, later this evening, we're going to have our full moon, well, this evening, my time. We're going to have our full moon releasing practice in the Sidereal Insights community here on Facebook. It's at 7.30 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, which is uh, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight, 2.30 a.m. for our friends in the U.K. and 11.30 a.m. in Australian Eastern Standard Time. So if you're not a member of the group and you are watching the broadcast, if you want to join us for that full moon releasing practice, you are more than welcome to join us. You do need to be a member of Sidereal Insights community to join. So go ahead and request access now and I'll get you added before we start. But that's coming up later in a few hours on the live stream. Live stream. If you got value from what we've talked about today, please like and share the broadcast. You know, if you have a friend that might benefit from any of this, feel free to tag them in the comments. And then again, you can always follow us on Facebook and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And especially if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you won't miss any of these videos because I upload them later so that you can always know where to go catch the latest video if you missed us live. Now, of course, we're doing our uh, full moon releasing tonight. The eclipse is not exact until tomorrow. It's still a powerful lunation. It's not going to hurt you to do your releasing tonight as opposed to tomorrow when the eclipse is actually happening. Um, we're doing it early so that we can share the recording for our friends who live in different time zones uh, so that they're not doing it too late. So we're going to have everything ready for folks. But thank you so much for joining me on the broadcast. It's been a pleasure to have you all on and uh, we will talk to you again later this evening. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, the, oh, so Angie, the full moon releasing. So I teach, and I, I have another video that I did about this, about how to use lunations actively. Because every month we have a new moon, and every month we have a full moon, right? And every year, what you have is a new moon or a full moon, at least one that happens in every sign and house of the zodiac. New moons bring, bring beginnings and opportunities. They open paths. Full moons bring endings and conclusions, and they're an opportunity to complete things that we've already started. And so at the full moon, one of the things that we like to do is release anything that's not serving us any longer, anything that's holding back our own personal growth and development. And then at the new moon, we set intentions for, how, for whatever it is that we're starting or what uh, that particular new moon is initiating. And so we leverage these lunations every month by getting together at the new moon to set orientations and at the full moon, we, we release. And you can release anything. It can be a belief. It can be a bad habit the way I did at the eclipse. You can release a person or a situation or a 
feeling, just something that you, you know you're ready to move beyond. It could be a behavior even, okay? So what we'll do tonight is we'll get into exactly what is it we want to release. We'll look at where the full moon happens in everyone's individual chart by house. We'll talk about the themes of Capricorn um, and the archetype of Capricorn. And then we'll give you some prompts for what it is to think about what it is you might want to let go tonight. And then what we'll do is we'll write down what we're releasing. We'll burn it or tear it up tiny bits and we'll let it go and it's wonderful so please join us Angie if you'd like um, I'll put uh, let me see here if I can get space in the comment box here I gotta enlarge the browser window a little bit so this is at facebook.com slash groups slash Insights Astrology. Let's make sure we spelled it right. Nope. Gotta, gotta spell Facebook right. Who would think? Alright, so that should be the link. So if you'd like to join us, doing it in there. Like I said, at 7:30 Mountain Daylight Time, 9:30 Eastern. That's what, 6:30 if you're Pacific. So right around there, join us, please. It would be lovely to have you. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and we'll catch you soon.